What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, KV Banks, with Kingdom Keys Nation. Listen, I'm excited because I got a hot one for you today. Today, I'm going to show you three Kevin Bond techniques that you need to add to your playing as a gospel musician. Oh, this is about to be a good one. I can't wait. Let's get into it. All right, fam, so listen, if you're new to the page, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Go ahead, please hit that thumbs up button. There you go. Hit the subscribe button, and don't forget the bell notification so you do not miss out on any future videos. So check this out. As a gospel musician, this is really important to remember that the, the secret of the, the sound that makes gospel so just, just, just make you feel good on the inside when you hear it isn't necessarily the chords. That's part of it. The chords that you play and how you play them and your voicing, all of those things are beautiful and they're great. But the true secret sauce of gospel music is in the approach of those chords. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. How you approach those chords, the approach of the chords is what's the, the secret sauce, the true gem of the sound of gospel music. So when we look at these three examples by Kevin Bond, we're looking at how he's approaching another chord, okay? So let's look at the first one. The first one is his use of diminished chords, okay? So check this out. Right at the top of the song, we have this. Okay, now the approach, the target chord that he's getting to is this A minor chord. That's what he's trying to get to. I'll probably do that. I think he does this seven. So, all right, that's, that's what he's trying to get to. But what he's doing is he's playing diminished chords to take him there. Okay, so now I'll say the main diminished chord is this A flat diminished because this naturally pulls you to the A minor. However, instead of just going straight to an A flat diminished, he approached this A flat diminished a whole step lower with this uh, F sharp diminished seven. Okay, so he did an F sharp diminished seven, then an A flat diminished seven to get to that A minor seven. Okay. Now there's another part, another part of the song where he's coming to that A minor again, and he does the same movement, but he he alters how he approaches it. So he's still gonna do an a, a F sharp diminished to an A flat diminished to get to that A minor chord. But instead of playing like this, he does this. All right, same movement. It's really it's the same movement, but. He's doing something different. So let's take a look. What is he doing? So we got this F sharp diminished chord again, right? We're going to invert it. Okay. So we'll go from here to there. And then we play this, uh, the A flat diminished. So we're going F sharp. And the name is changing because diminished chord, diminished seven chords are built in all minor thirds. So whatever the no lowest note in that chord is actually going to be, is going to just name it that. So you see it says C diminished 7, E flat diminished 7, F sharp diminished 7, A diminished 7. But if you just invert them, it's the same chord. That's, it's a, literally, it's the same chord. It's just how you're playing it, okay? So don't worry about the name change. It's still the same thing, okay? So he's playing that. He inverts it. And then he comes to A flat diminished. But he doesn't just play this. That's not what he's doing. He's, what he's doing is what's called a drop two, okay? And he's really, he's really uh, 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 famous for this. I love this because he does it in another song I love, You Are God Alone by Marvin Sapp. I'll show you that in a minute. But what he's going to do here, a drop two, for those who don't know, a drop two means I'm going to take the second from highest note in the chord, which right now, the second to highest note is this F sharp. A is the highest. This is the one that's underneath it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it or, uh, an octave. So that's the drop two. So he does that on all three of those chords. Drop the two, drop the two, drop the two. So, okay. Now he does one more thing too, because it's not just him playing the drop two. He also is doing an embellishment in the left hand, walking up to those notes. Watch this. So let's practice that too. 
I'm not just going straight to it. I'm adding a little extra life to it. This would be the same thing as if, if a guitar player, they're on there, they're playing a the guitar and they go, mm, they slide up to that note. You know, they well, I can't, I can't just, you know, I can't bend this note or anything like that. So I got to embellish it that way. Okay. Okay. All right. To get to that A minor. Um, uh, he does that. It's kind of like the same type of feeling or the same type of thing. And you are God alone. Uh, you are God alone. Okay. All right. So right there, same thing. He's going B flat diminish, A diminish to a G minor chord. Okay, but instead of just playing it that way, drop two, drop two to the G minor. But he also plays the inversions. Same chord, just playing an inversion. Okay? Real sweet. So let's take this movement out of uh, this song. Let's do something else. Let's do Amazing Grace in the key of E flat. I can do it right here. Let's let's put it right here. I'm gonna I'm approaching the C minor, but instead of just going to, I'm gonna do this. Okay. So do the same thing. I'm doing an A diminish. Do a drop two. Play the inversion to a B diminish. Invert it to a C minor chord. All right, so here's the second technique that Kevin Bond uses that you need to have. It's going to be spread voicing. So check this out. When he goes, uh, I've come through many hard trials. Right here, this movement right here. All right, this movement is so beautiful. And it sounds refreshing, but it's really just a uh, minor 911 chords, okay? Now, in an earlier video on the channel, I talked about how big chords come from small chords, okay? So we're gonna look at this from the perspective of a triad, okay? So when I'm looking, I'm trying to form an A minor 911. When I look at this chord, or rather that instead, but when I look at this chord, this is what I notice. I'm playing the A's in my bass, right? I got the A in the bass. Right hand is playing a G major triad, all right? It's a G major chord. So when I look, this chord in the right hand is just a whole step lower than my bass note, okay? So what I wanna do now to really get that sound, cause I need an A minor chord, so I'm, I'm definitely, I'm not, I'm not gonna play it like this. I'm gonna take that A minor, that C, I'm gonna move it up an octave. So I'm gonna spread that A minor out and I'm gonna put a G major chord in my right hand and that gives me the A minor 911 sound, okay? But now what he did, Instead of just going straight to that major chord, he played a sus4 chord. All sus chords need to be resolved. So that's, we use a sus chord. I'm playing this with the intent of resolving it. So, he does that. He just takes it down a whole step. Same thing, G minor, right? Spread voicing, that's the G minor chord. I'm gonna move it up an octave. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I need an F major chord, because that's a G. Whole step would be F, so I need an F major chord. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make it a sus4. So, all right, so. Okay, now, uh, and, and he's using this to get to the four. All right, so he did. All right, so let's use that to get to the four. So check this out. <laughs> let's do 
let's let's do this. So I can look at this as like a six, uh, five, one, four. All right. Yeah, I gotta do six. Uh, Okay, and on the one I just played a dominant chord there. All right, so let's say let's 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 put that in a different key. Let's go to F sharp. So I want to do a six. So that six is going to be an E flat minor whole step lower than E flat, D flat. All right, so you already see my D uh, my E flat minor nine eleven, but I'm going to play sus chord. Yeah. All right. So I can do that to get me to the four in the key of F sharp. All right, so here's the third and final movement that Kevin Bond uses that I want to show you today. And that is circular playing. So check this out. Um, once he does this, uh, that uh, right here, that movement right there. Where did that come from? Like, what? Is, what is this? What is that? And at first, I, I just thought it was just Kevin Bond just being Kevin Bond, just the musical genius that he is. However, once I broke it down and analyzed what he was doing, the movement made perfect sense. So check it out. It's actually an expansion of a very popular gospel movement. If I was just to play this, this movement without those extra embellishments, I would probably do something like this. Uh, uh, I'm through. Uh, th uh. I do something like that. Now we've all heard of this. However, we're getting what he's doing. Remember, I told you our chorus that we're playing is about how we're approaching. So we gotta we gotta figure out what chord is he trying to approach. And in essence, he's approaching this here, this B flat, this B flat. Well, we could just really say a B flat seven. Okay, but it's same thing. It's a dominant chord. So this is just an expanded version of this, but it's a dominant chord, a B flat seven. Okay, and that's the chord that he's approaching. Okay, and so instead of just playing uh, uh, trials, instead of just going one and going straight to that chord, instead of just doing like that, like we've heard before, what he did was he decided to play. Uh, he did a dominant chord, a C7, and he could have just went down a half step to a B7, to the B flat, you know, he could have done that, but he also understands something. He understands that instead of playing this, this B, he could replace that B with an F. And the reason why, and this is this will actually talk about tritone substitutions, which I'll do another video talking about tritone substitutions, but B and an F, they're a tritone apart from each other, which means that anything that I would play with the B in the bass, I could also play the F in the bass and it'll sound good. So that's what he's actually doing. And when you look at this, this is fourths. These notes are separated by fourths. So... And it's, and it's almost as if he took this, this chord here and we're just going. You could do that too. If you wanted to make an expanded version of that same movement. So you could do a. a you could, uh, oh. Yeah, there it is. That's right. I like that better. Put that 13 on top. Same movement. Or same thing. All right. So let's let's see. Where can I put this this type of movement? Um, oh, well, hold on, hold on. Let me let me say this first. So I'm doing that. So that's just a simplified version of it, which is the tritone. That's the route that he chose. He tried he decided to do those tritones in the right hand. Okay, and then this whole thing, 
Uh, it's really just the expansion of this chord. So it's just an embellishment on that. I'm not breaking that part down, but that's what he's doing there. It's just what we would do over that A flat chord. So instead of just hitting that A flat chord, or like this this chord here, instead of just laying on it, he's he's moving it around. Okay. However, so let's look and see what can we do. Let's maybe say uh, it is well. Let's do it in B flat. So. Right here. See that I did it right there? And as well. There we go. Okay, so that's uh that's where you can put that. Anytime I'm going to be going to that that flat seven where I will be playing that quote unquote the church chord as I like to call it, you can put it right there in that spot, okay? And I'm doing a circular movement, okay? Going by fourths. Those are all fourths from each other. Okay? I would practice doing that in every key. Okay? Do that everywhere. What if I did that in total praise, huh? I didn't practice this one. Let's see if it works. Uh. That could work. So, uh. So that could work, it could work right there in that, in that same spot. All right, family, I hope you enjoyed that video. And I know that you're going to use these three concepts to incorporate into your own plan. Have fun with it. I would love to see it. Go ahead and post it. Tag me in it. I would love to see what you're doing and how you're incorporating these movements into your plan. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget the bell notification so you do not miss out on any future videos. I love you, family. I got another video for you to watch. Go ahead and stick and stay. Catch you next time. Peace. But he did the same thing. These are diminished chords. And it's the same, it's the same thing, just kind of like in reverse order. Still the same chord, right? but he's playing it in this inversion and he's walking up this time. Okay. All right. That wasn't planned. I wasn't planning on doing that part, but <laughs> it also works. Okay.